you want to follow along today's message, rmfchurch.org, click on media and then notes and do what you can now. And uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, this is the King James Version. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thy own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. I was uh, talking with my sister who lives in Florida now, used to be in Kentucky. They've moved to Florida. I was talking with her, and she said she heard Andrew Walmack say this. I, I didn't hear him say this, but she said she heard, was listening to him, heard him say this, that uh, I wonder if Adam and Eve would have partook of the, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil if they would have been thankful for all the other trees that God said they could eat of. I don't know, but that just really struck me. If they would have been thankful for all the other trees, would they have really focused on the one tree, the one tree that they couldn't eat? Being thankful is more powerful than what you and I truly understand and know. Gratitude is a powerful thing. And uh, there's a couple of things before I want to say. I just got this in prayer this week before... We start into the message, but um, I know that if you've been married more than a year, this may have come on your radar. Um, we've been married 32 years, so it's definitely come on my radar. But, um, but this happens in, I think, marriages and relationships in general. And that is this, that you can, it, it just seems like people's weaknesses come to the forefront. And it's easy to meditate and really concentrate on the weakness of your spouse or of your friend or anybody, your pastor. It, it, can't, it really can. And the Lord really spoke this to my heart this week. He said, Mike, you know, it's easy for relationships. It's, it's like a small bowl of... of uh, negative things that you're focusing on, weaknesses in that person. It's like a bowl. But he said, let me show you, there's a major dump truck. You know, like the ones, now I'm not talking about a pickup truck. I'm talking about the ones that you have to take a step ladder to get up to the cab of the truck. He said, this is the good points of, the, of that person. But you're focusing on this bowl of negative things. He said, I see the dump truck. You see the bowl. I, because I see the dump truck, they're blessed and highly favored, and I love them. You see the negative in the bowl, and you don't see the blessing. You don't see the goodness. You don't see what I see. That'll help you in your marriage. That'll help you in your relationships. That'll help you in life. Amen? Amen. And then the other thing, I feel like I wrote this down that I got in praying, is that many people are looking to people instead of God when it comes to getting your needs met. The Lord dealt with it, me about this, even with our church. Years ago, I just, you know, I wanted uh, the finances to increase, you know. And I, it was, I'll be transparent, you know, I just thought I could get a raise. And the Lord said, so is the church your provision then. Are we looking to people? Are you looking to your job, your employer, to meet your need? I tell you what, there's no, nothing greater than looking to God to meet your need. Because he won't just meet the need, he'll far supersede. God has not ever been the God who just meets the need. If you don't understand that, just read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when Jesus said, Peter, cast your net on the opposite side. You know, Lord, we've fished all night. He says, I know, but catch your net on their side. He didn't just catch a few fish. You know, I'm sure if Peter would have thought that, man, if I just get one big net full of fish, that would be great. He got so many fish that Jesus told him what to do that his boat began to sink. 
I've heard a lot of people going fishing, but I've never, ever heard of anybody saying, yeah, we caught so much, the boat began to sink. If you, I mean, nobody does that. But my point is this, God is a super abundant God. He never just meets the need. He always far supersedes it. Amen? Well, I want to talk about helping people, being generous and just being godlike. I know people say, I'll give when I reach a certain point. I'll help. I'll help out when I'm better off myself. But I just want you to know that God wants you to do what you can right now. It's easy to say, to put everything off in the future. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says this, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. God wants you to know that you can do good things right now. Right where you're at with what you have, with what you have. And um, I know this, as a, a pastor, or, or some people say, you know, we try to be critical of, of this pastor, of this church. And the Lord wants all of us to know if every church in this city, in this state, in this country, in this world that believes that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, every single one of those churches is doing something good. Every single one of them are doing something good. It's easy to be critical of pastors and churches because of this doctrine. And the Lord said, you know what? I can use that one. So you need to shut it up, Mike. Yes, sir. I was listening to, I, I don't, I probably only listen to about three or four of these a year. TED Talks. Have you, are you familiar with TED Talks? And this one was, you really should, li I don't. I don't think I've ever told our church to listen to any of the TED Talks. This is probably a first. But this one's called Radical Generosity is a Way of Living, Not an Act of Giving. Everybody should watch that. It's 14 minutes long, I think. I'm not for sure. I think the, it's a young lady, Amy Campbell, but don't quote me on that. If you just Google Radical Generosity is a Way of Living, Not an Act of Giving, it's a TED Talk. And she co-authored with a book uh, about generosity. And she said, you know, exercise is not the secret pill. Uh, meditation is not the... She went all these things she has discovered and found out that being generous will help you in every area of your life. Every area of your life. And they have done a study and said people who are generous, number one, live longer. People who are generous live longer. They have less depression. They are physically healthier. And there are endorphins or chemicals that are released in your body uh, when you give. When you give. Now, I've never heard of that. It says this, on a scale of 1 to 10, where insulin is a 10... Generosity, they've rated it to 7 or 8 of what it does to your body. And they've come to this conclusion. It's not a matter of how much you give. It's just that if you give. It's not just, oh, if you give a big, oh, it really helps you. No, even the small things. I wonder if that's why God said it's better to than to... Hmm. Most people think that, you, you know, you're just wanting to get something from somebody if you talk about giving. And, you know, even God, you know, people think, well, he just wants me to give because he wants something from me. No, he's trying to get something to you, to us. It's just against, you know, human nature to say, oh, you should give. It's better for you. Most people in the world would go, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, you give $100, usually you check your checking account on Monday morning, you're $100 less. Have you ever been there? I mean, like, well, really nothing happened, you know, except I see a negative point in my checkbook. 
And so your human nature is, I, I, it's just hard for us to have a revelation that it is better to give than it is to receive. But it's true. Everybody believe the Bible? So, I, I felt like saying this, young people, all y'all listen to me, if you're young. I'm young, so I'm listening. If you're young... Listen to me, young people, because it's easy for you to think, you know, this is really for older people. You know, when you have more, when you're better off financially, it's for you. And I remember, man, when I, my first job at McDonald's, I was making $2.05 an hour, and my mom struggled financially. It was just me and her, and so, I mean, I worked hard for my money. I had to get up to go to school, and I was working 40, 50 hours a week going to school full-time as a senior in high school. And so uh, when I got my money, I wanted to spend it on what I, Mike Davis wanted to spend it on. And I was not a generous person. I was not a giving person. Matter of fact, I had a 55 Chevy, and I spent 95% on that car. The other 5% was for food so I could survive. But the car was the thing. It's easy as a young person to say, I've worked so hard and, and so I want to fulfill myself. I deserve it. And that's true. But if you just are squeaky tight that you don't give, it's going to affect your health. It's going to affect your happiness. It's going to affect your life, period. Hallelujah. And let me say this. Don't feel condemned because some of you right now are going, dear Lord Jesus. No, don't feel condemned. Just start doing it. You have to be intentional. And let me just say this. You have to be intentional about your giving and I'm not just talking about money. Being generous with your time. Being generous with your actions. Being generous in every area of your life. You have to be intentional. Letting people go before you. You know. I know we're still full of turkey, but... 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5 says this, Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It is not rude. You remember that message a couple of weeks ago? It is not rude. It is not rude and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking. It's not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. That's the love of God that is in you. And listen, this is how God feels towards you as well. Did you know God's not touchy? You know, that's what we used to think. If you sin, it just offended God. God's not touchy. God is not touchy when it comes to your life and your relationship with him. We've all had kind of relationships. Haven't we all had kind of relationships where you have to walk on eggshells as soon as you are in contact with them? Don't you just hate that? I hate that. You know, you've got to be careful what you say. And, and you know, they, they will take everything to the negative. You, if you say something, you think, dear Lord. I mean, I'm just, I just want to be Mike Davis. I don't want to be Pastor Mike. You know, I have to just be careful, you know. You say, hey, how you doing? You know, and you say something that could be taken wrong, and they go, ah, Pastor Mike. I got... Don't be touchy. God's not that way towards you and me. Psalms 112, 1 through 5 says, praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delightful in obeying his commandments. Their children will be successful everywhere. And an entire generation of godly people will be blessed. How is that going to be? Because people of God are going to have generosity flowing out of them. And it's going to bless a whole generation because of that. Though themselves will be wealthy. 
There's so many people that don't like to hear about money in church. Let me just say something. You know, for those people who are against people who are wealthy, if you are just getting your bills met, you will not be able to help anybody. And yet we ridicule or, or say something terrible about people who have some money. I've come to the conclusion that if you want to be a blessing, you've got to have some of it. <laughs> they themselves will be wealthy. And their good deeds will last forever. Man. One day if Jesus doesn't come, you and I are going to leave this planet. One way or the other, we're all leaving. You do understand that. And I don't know about you, but I want to have a footprint left on this earth that says something good about the Lord Jesus Christ that he did through me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. Man, well, those are three slap you upside the head words. Good comes to those who lend mercy or money generously and conduct their business fairly. Good comes. Good comes to what? To those who lend money generously and who conduct their business fairly. First Peter 1 7, or 2 Peter 1 7 says this, And to godliness add mercy toward your brothers and sisters, and to mercy toward others add unending love. God just wants to manifest himself. And do you know what the number one way he wants to manifest himself? Through you and me. Through you and me. He wants to manifest himself through you and me. Ephesians 4 28. I'm going to read these quickly. If any one of you has stolen from someone else, never do it again. Instead, be industrious, earning an honest living, and then you will have enough to bless those in need. I feel like the Lord gave me this revelation of, of, a while back. I don't know how long ago. But... Um, you know, because I just felt like, you know, I want everybody to have a revelation and that they can be wealthy, that they can be blessed. And finally, the Lord said this to me. He says, everybody's not going to get that, Mike. I said, what do you mean? Not everybody's going to understand or get that revelation. They're just not. It's just not. It's available. It's available to everybody. But not everybody's going to walk in that. He said, this is why. Listen to me. This is how good God is. He said, this is why I want to people that do have that revelation to be abundantly wealthy so they can help those who don't see it. I don't know about you, but I just think, man, God, you are so good. He is so good. Instead of like, well, you don't get it because, you know, you just harden your heart or because you don't have this or you just don't see it. Or you just don't have the wisdom, whatever. You, well, you're just going to have to do the best you can. God goes, no. They don't have to just do the best they can. They can still look to me and I will raise somebody up that will help them. Man. He's a good, good God. In America, generosity implies an open-handed sharing of all material resources. In other words, a restaurant can serve generous portions. Don't you like to go to those restaurants? Melody and I one time went to a real super fancy, you know, $50 million type restaurant where, you know, you pay super high dollar and they brought the plate out and I just stared at it. You know, I'm not a big eater. Melody and my family, people who know me know I'm not a big eater. But I do like to eat when I pay, you know, $100 for a meal. You, you, I want some food on the plate. And they walked away, and I stared at it, and I thought, that's a good four bites, and that's on that meat. I forgot what, and, and that's it. And I thought, dear Lord in heaven, let's pray. God will bless and multiply this $100 meal. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Anyway, it's, some restaurants are, have generous Portions. A donor can be generous with their money. A friend can be generous with their, with their pickup truck. 
or if they're a lawnmower or borrowing that or loaning you their timeshare or condo up in the mountains, that, that's a blessing. While some people are generous for the money, others can be generous with their time. They can drive you to the airport, feed you your pet while you're gone away. They can help you pack your stuff, load the truck, help move you. A lot of ways to be generous. You can be generous with your money, be generous with your time, just generous in general. Every area of your life. Because being a Christian is not about what you can do for God. But what are you going to allow God to do through you? Did you hear that? I remember Julio there, when his wife passed away, our church, you guys are so generous. Our church is a very generous church. And man, when at Julio, we were at his house and all this food for our church was brought in and Julio just, anytime somebody came in, my church, just look at all this for my church. And it just went on. It took, almost, and I went, like, holy cow, it's okay, Julio. It's okay, man. And he was making such a big, it blessed him, but he wanted everybody that came through that front door. My church did this. Paul and Sue Lures, when Janet's brother passed away, they provided, you know, um, meat trays and all kinds of trays and everything. And that was just such a blessing. Just providing little things is a blessing. We, we think, oh, it's, you, can, you, you need to be intentional. You just have to look to ways, how can I bless? But when you do, it's a ripple effect. It causes other people to think about things like that. It doesn't just affect that person that you're giving or being a blessing to. God is very generous with us. For God so loved the world that he gave. What did he do? He gave the most precious thing, his only begotten son. Nothing else could top that. He gave his absolute best. I, the Lord taught me this back when I was looking for a pickup truck years ago. You know... Um, I've been wanting a truck for a long, long time. Been believing God for a truck for a long, long time. And um, Dad was in Africa, you know, and I found two different trucks. One had bells and whistles. You know what I mean by that? It did everything but drive for you. And I don't want my vehicle to ever drive for me, just so you know. Um, I want to drive it. But um, if I wanted somebody else to drive, I'd be in a aircraft so the pilot could take me I don't want a computer but anyway that's another story so I was there's something inside of me that said you know don't spend extra money you know just get a truck just get a truck and I was fighting this battle on the inside of me and so I called dad and he said something to me that I really felt like it was God on the other end of the phone. I said, Dad, you know, I mean, this one cost a few thousand more, you know, but, you know, I mean, I can settle for this, you know, and I think this. He said, so you would be happier with the other truck. I said, oh, yeah. He said, you know, Mike, if I had the money, I would pay cash for you to get the best truck that you wanted. And he said these words. Because I love you. That's why I would want that truck for you to make you happy. And he said, how much more does your heavenly father love you than I do? I hung up the phone and started crying. Because I felt like that was God speaking to me. He says, Mike, I love you. Now, don't, you can get stupid on this, okay? To where you just want to do stuff selfishly and greedily. You know, that's the wrong, wrong heart. In the wrong motive. Are you hearing me? But um, I read an article by, I get an article, it's called Monday Morning by Roy Williams. He says this. Can I read it to you real quick? Those who are generous for the money are known as givers or donors or philanthropists. And those who are generous for their time are known as helpers or volunteers. 
But we have no special name for people who are generous, generous with their encouragement because those people are extremely rare. What is encouragement exactly and why is it so rare? The prefix en was extracted from Latin and comes to us through the French when it precedes a verb. En means to include, allow, or cause to happen. So when you encourage someone, you cause courage to happen within them. You give them a gift. They can barely, that they carry bravely into the future. You make them less afraid. Genetic encouragement is as obvious and awkward as flattery. You're a winner. Or you can do that. To truly encourage a person, you must speak to an ability and a talent or special sensitivity they possess. When you privately tell a person about something special you see in them, something that they to know is there, you give them courage and confidence to do it. I've noticed, in other words, I've noticed that you see connections and relationships between things that most people never notice. I think this may be one of your superpowers. I've noticed that you can always tell when someone doesn't feel included and then you make them feel like they are part of the group. I really admire this about you. I've noticed that when everyone else is making excuses, you are the one who steps up and does what needs to be done. The world needs more people like you. And you know, like my wife Melody, she's a problem solver. She and I have talked about it. She's gifted in that. If there's a problem, her brain just starts ticking towards a, a solution to it. She's a problem solver. So I can say, man, Mel, thank you for... She figures out stuff. So many things. It's a part-time job because I need help. <laughs> okay, it's a full-time job. I'll just be honest. <laughs> to see the good things that hide within a person, you need only to pay attention. Attention is a high denominational cu currency in any transaction between two people. Attention is something you pay, and insight is what you can buy with it. If you want to have insight into a person's hopes and dreams, you need only to pay attention. We want to empower people. We want to give them courage and confidence to face the future with a smile. We want to help them be a stronger and happier person. So the next time you're with someone that matters, talk less and listen more. Pay attention to their actions. And when you notice something they are good at, tell them what you have noticed that they are good at. I'm telling you what, that this is a lacking commodity on our planet. Everybody wants to be critical. Everybody, you just, man, don't you just wish Facebook and social media would go away? I think that would be the greatest blessing the planet could ever have. Along with all the news media. If there's some way to knock out those... No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, I, I copied down Melody's story when she was in the Congo. And she wrote this. I believe it was in an email. She said, There are so many differences in culture between here and the Congo and my beloved Pueblo. One of those things is hospitality. It's very different here. Just a few days after my arrival, a group of Stephanie's teachers, Stephanie is Melody's sister who works over there, a group of Stephanie's teachers came to welcome me and brought me a chicken, some papayas, bananas, and peanuts. Another day, the principal of the Bible college was wearing a beautiful dress, and I told her how pretty it was. Her response was, you like it? I'll have you one made. I assured her I didn't need her to do that, but these wonderful believers in a third world nation excel at hospitality and giving. They don't have a whole lot compared to other parts of the world, but they are generous with what they have. And it's really a beautiful sight. 
And then there's the music. You're going to have to crank it up. She talks about the music and everything. There are many cultural differences, and yet there is a common language that the Lord placed in each of us. Love. Paul writes, love never fails and is true. God created humanity in his image and his likeness, and God is love because of that. Each of us have the capacity to both give and receive love regardless of the, of the culture. It bridges the cultural gap. A little girl walked up to mom in church last Sunday, and this is Mama Hagemeyer. And for those who know, she really can't communicate right now. And, uh, but a little girl walked up to mom in church while Melody was there and reached out her hand to her. She came and just laid her head the little girl, on mom's lap. And mom hugged and patted her head throughout the whole worship. The little girl didn't move. She was just soaking up mom's love. And mom just glowed as she and the little girl communicated through love without speaking a word. No matter what personality differences there might be or other difficulties, just love because love never fails. The greater the revelation of the love of God, the more generous you and I will be. You know, in Africa, they, trust me, everyone here has more than what the people in, in Kalimi probably have. We think we are missing this, we don't have enough of this. And you just go out to a third world country, you'll come back and realize how blessed you really are. Like Melody said, it's so great when you turn the faucet on and water comes out. Most people there don't have running water. You don't have electricity all the time. I just want us as a church to truly be intentional with our giving, whether it's encouragement, whether it's money, whether it's time, whatever it is. Because God's trying to get something to you, not from you. And we need to have that kind of mentality. We need to have that. And during the holiday season, man, be a blessing to people. Not only to those that you know, but to strangers. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I, bought a, I was at Starbucks, and I saw a mom. I don't know if she was a single mom, but it, then a 10-year-old around their 12-year-old daughter. And she went up, and, and right as she got finished ordering, I just went up, and I put my credit card in there and bought it for her. And I didn't realize. I just thought, you yeah, know, I just want to bless you. Can I say something? I didn't hear an angel. Didn't hear God. Some, so many of us are looking for something supernatural. And because you're looking for it, you miss it. Just, just do it. And when I backed up, you know, it's no big deal. And I'm not saying this to Pat Mike Davis. I'm trying to teach you just to be intentional on little things. And that little girl did not take her eyes off me. Like nobody's ever done that something for her. I don't know if that's the case. And then after she picked up her coffee or whatever, and the mother, I walked over to the other side waiting or talking with Joel or whatever. The mom came over and said, I really want to, Thank you. That really touched my heart that you did that. A total stranger. I said, well, good. You be blessed. God loves you. Just little things. You know, we're looking at, you know, when I, somebody told me this, and I know what they mean. When I win the lottery, man, I'm really going to bless the church. <laughs> they never did. On both of those counts. But anyway, uh, it's not so much the, the amount. It's just the heart behind the amount. Are you hearing me? I said, are you hearing me? And listen, God is getting stuff to us. And through 2022, it's right around the corner. Let's be determined 
to be givers in every area of our life. Listen, the church is doing fine. So I'm not saying this message because if y'all don't give, we're going to close the doors. No, man, I'm, I'm not dependent upon your giving. I am not dependent upon your giving. I'm dependent upon God, and he is giving super abundantly above all that I can ask or think, and we never lack anything. Amen. It's been that way since day one. It's not going to start tomorrow. But this is the point, that I want you to live longer, to be healthier, to have less depression, and to have them endorphins kicking off in you all the time. Amen? Let's stand. Can I read a quote from John, Joel Osteen? I said John, it's actually Joel. It says this, You may have dreams, you've buried promises that you've put in the grave. Things you were believing for that you think there's no way. God is saying to you, I'm about to open up your graves. I'm about to make things happen where you know that I am the Lord. What you thought was dead is about to come back to life. That marriage you've given up on. That business you wanted to start. The house you dreamed about. You bury them and put them in the grave. Get ready. That grave is about to open back up. What you didn't realize is that you buried it alive. God's about to breathe new life into your health, to your finances, your children, and your dreams. Things that are coming. Things are going to come together that you thought were impossible. That's what God wants for us. It's what he wants for you. He's not trying to get something from you. Our Father is always trying to get something to you. Let me pray for you. Father, I just believe in Jesus' name. Motives are changing. Hearts are being transformed this morning. Even as I speak, hearts are being changed. Condemnation and guilt being flooded out with the love of God. And people sensing how much God loves them and that we all are just going to look to you to be determined to be a blesser instead of looking for a blessing we are going to be the one where the blessing comes from where the money comes from where the time the encouragement the act of kindness is going to come from us because we are just like our father God we are just like our Father, who is very generous, created in His image. Thank you, Father, for helping us to see that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.